Hey everybody, Jeff Cohen here, and I am joined by John Kennard, or Kennard, or we were talking about this before, uh, different pronunciations of names. John, welcome to the blog. Why don't we tell people a little bit about who you are and uh, the small little company you work for? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. And please just call me John. Uh, so I, uh, John Kennard, I'm part of the strategy and business development team for Google Shopping. Uh, in particular, I lead the effort to recruit marketplace sellers to our new thing called Shopping Actions. And uh, yeah, I'm based in LA, so I'm in sunny Los Angeles right now. And that's, and that's better than the cold and snow that I got here in Chicago. Oh, so here's, right. what I, here's what I want to know, John. Um, Amazon sellers who are selling multi-channel, right? So um, they're not, their inventory is not just an FBA, but they've got the ability to sell uh, to other types of sh sellers. Um, they've had offerings from Google in the past. What's different between this offering and other offerings from Google in the past? And maybe why should they uh, give it consideration again? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, we've we've had a number of different sort of iterations of a shopping business. We've had local inventory ads, which have been very popular. We've had Google Express, which I think everyone, it's the nom de guerre, right? So that everyone has known Google as a shopping entity. Google Express, though, is really, it, was, it, it really is more of a local play, if you will. So built around omni-channel retailers, solving the use case of, I need a product in the next few hours. Hey, yep, Google, yep. get it for me effectively, right? But when you take a step back and you think about what are the use cases that you see across Google properties? So we have eight properties with a billion users. We have all of this sort of distributed intent, right? Disparate signals of people getting ready to buy stuff. Um, ultimately, what we realize is that there's an opportunity for us to, to be better at converting those transactions. And so what if you were on YouTube or you're on images or you're in search and you actually are looking for the product that you want, you don't necessarily need it in the next hour. Um, what if we could actually show you that product and allow you to transact and buy that product right then and there? We actually think that's really good for, good for the user first and foremost, which is how we build everything, but also a really interesting opportunity for merchants. And so if you take a step back and again, think about all that universe of demand that we have, um, up until recently, our platform, our shopping platform that enabled transactions was really limited to, let's call it 40, 50, 100 merchants. Whereas now we have, thousands of merchants that are selling products. And really what we're looking for is the universe of products. So anyone who's a merchant that sells something and can fulfill it well, so fulfill it outside of FBA, but really just fulfill it well, um, has, a, has a home in our new platform. Yeah, because when it comes down to it, right? When it comes down to it, we as consumers, let's not talk about us as sellers on the marketplace, but as consumers, we want to be able to buy wherever we're at. Right, we used to have to go to the mall, and then we had to not. Th and then we had to go to a particular website. Right, and I think the the future is really our ability to wherever we're at transact and get the product that we want. Um, yeah. you're at a friend's house, you see something that they want, you want to be able to take a phone out, scan a picture of it, find that product, buy it, have it delivered to your house before you get home. Right, that's the uh, that's the. Uh, the, the, the minority report future that we all kind of envision in, in some way, shape or form. And yeah. um, this is really just taking that same concept to the Google properties and saying, hey, someone's looking for this product and uh, you wanna buy it and I can sell it to you. So let's connect buyers and sellers together. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, it's, we, we don't use the word marketplace, but effectively it's a marketplace. And I think if you took a step back and and, and, you know, our experience, we've been around long enough that I'm sure you remember when mobile web came out. First, it was mobile web, then it was mobile apps. And it's like, oh, I have the ability to find products in my phone right now. I don't have to sit at a computer and do it. That changed the use cases, the times when people would actually want to get a product or when they'd want to buy it or when do they need it. And I think if you, if you really think about what user choice is, user choice is everything. You should be solving for every problem. So if someone wants something, they want to save money and have it delivered to them in a week, great. If they need it in two days, great. If they need it next hour, great. If they want to go pick it up in store, great. And I think the way we're thinking about it is, is again, if we have this universe of demand, just, just provide the assortment. Once we have the assortment, then we have optionality about how we actually get that product yeah. to the customer. Could it be a delivery from the merchant directly? Could it be a pickup in store? Again, we want to solve all of those problems. And because we have such a diverse 
set of users. It's really everyone in the world and they have a diverse set of expectations and choices and whatever else. Like basically we can't start solving that until we have the assortment. And so really the call out is to any merchant who has great product and it can price it well and can ship it, uh, ship it predictably, they're going to have a home on this platform and ultimately they'll find, they'll find users that are looking for those products. So, so that's what I was going to ask qualifications, right? Are there certain qualifications? Do I need to be a certain size? Does my product have to have a certain rating? Um, do I need to be at a certain sales volume? It sounds like I need to have some type of third party um, direct to consumer shipping model in place, not necessarily a warehouse, but um, interacting with a warehouse, some kind of 3PL. Um, what type of requirements are, are, are there in the process to uh, get approved? Yeah, it's um, very typical third party, uh, third party marketplace seller is, is, is likely going to qualify. I think if you're someone who only has your products inside of an, of an Amazon warehouse, that's a little bit more of a challenge. I think it's not a direct fit for us, but, but the vast majority of sellers that are looking outside of that platform have created the solution where they're able to fulfill from another warehouse location. And the things that you were talking about around uh, product quality or merchant score, a lot of the same sort of signals that other marketplaces use around what makes a good and predictable merchant, what is a good product, what is a good price, all of that stuff are, are going to be our factors within our uh, platform as well, where we want to find the best price product. We want to be able to show merchants that we know are going to give the service and, and uh, quality that we're looking for. And as a step back, I would say, you know, trust is so inherently critical to Google. Uh, if you don't trust Google, you don't open Gmail, you don't open Maps, right. you don't use any of our any of our broad services, you don't use YouTube. Um, so that's not something that we can really uh, damage. So I think a huge part of this is about having merchants that we know have high quality and, and are actually bringing sort of unique assortment and are not selling someone else's product or actually, let me take a step back there. You can sell other, other people's products, of course, if you're authorized to do that, but right. we're really going to be strict about counterfeiting about having products that are not supposed to be on the platform. We're really going to keep fairly tight constraints around that. But if you're a seller who's selling on other platforms and doing it effectively, you're almost certainly going to be able to do it on our platform. Great. So this is an opportunity um, to, for brands that are looking to, and, and sellers who are looking to expand their footprint. Um, I always like to say there's a first mover advantage to be in part of this. Um, I think John, this is still relatively new, like within the last six months, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mentioned that we had, you know, just dozens of, of sellers on the platform back when it was yeah. Google Express, maybe a year and a half ago. We've got thousands now. We expect yeah. to have tens or hundreds of thousands. But to your point, first mover advantage is a real thing. If you it think is. about sort of deterministic policy in marketplaces and the idea that you're sort of spinning up or spinning down and anyone who's sold on Amazon knows and feels this explicitly. Yep. Where you, you, the merchants who were top 100 on a platform 10 years ago are probably the same ones now. That's because you're able to continue to spin your loop and give the signal back to them, back to the platform. Hey, I'm a predictable seller. I've got good product. I've got low defect rate. Um, and, it, and if you're able to get in early and start build, building relevance on the platform early, then we know when we have a product, we have a, a query that we need to find a good merchant. If we have some history with you, we know we can show you. And so that yeah. actually does compound over time. It's a really- it's I think first problem. mover advantage is a very real thing. Last question I wanna ask you is about fees. How much does it cost? Um, what's the fees that are going to be associated to this? So no cost to list, uh, no cost to, um, no ongoing costs. There's no hidden fees. It's a very clean commission structure at the moment. So it's uh, most everything is 12% or less. We have a rate card that's easily searchable. Just look for shopping actions, commission uh, commissions and the first result will come up and, and tell you all the details. We break it out by subcategory. So some are more, some, some are less, but everything is under 12, uh, 12 percent. And then do we pay, do we pick our own shipping price? Yeah. So you pick your own shipping price. So you list what your product price will be and what your shipping price is. You can take the shipping price and put it into the product price and have free shipping. Right. You can have, uh, you know, fully lit shipping. I think there are, there are different options there. I think there are sort of different schools of thought overall, but um, ultimately, you're dictating what the shipping You've got price is. 
shipping fees. And then the other part of it is it's fairly well lit that, that the customer is buying from the merchant. And so that's a big distinction. While we're Google, while we're backing the transactions, a huge part of what we're going to say, again, think about the trust is we're going to back the transaction. This is something that we know uh, the user can trust because we're putting a Google badge there. But ultimately, you know, you as the merchant are fulfilling the order. You're providing, um, you know, the, the quality of that service. We're a first line of customer service, but, you know, you, you ultimately are the ones who are, are, are have the relationship with the customer. Awesome. Check it out. Google Shopping Express. Links below in the blog post. Post some questions. We'll get them to John. We'll get answers. Thanks for joining and sharing about this product. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Bye.